Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson and you are listening to the Squash Buckler Diaries podcast. The podcast about Joy Shirley, the girl who lives in dreams. And in season one, she lives in her father's dream. That's where she grows up. Why is she in the dream? How'd she get in the dream? Why is she in her father's dreams? How did he find her? Since we already know he's not a biological father. So, um... All these questions and more will be answered, but right now we are going through her life. She's going to be a future heroine and we are going through a day by day, not day by day, but a slice of life, a slice of life by a slice of life. As we see what it's like to grow up in a dream. She lives on a flying pirate ship called Bunny's Revenge. She's watched over by the Red Dragon, although she doesn't know it. The Red Dragon is the one who tells these stories, at least in season one. And she lives a life of adventure because that's what her father dreams about. The problem is that when he's gone, when he's awake, she is alone. She didn't used to be alone. And check out the stories about Mary, but she's alone now from the age of two and a half. And this story is at age two and a half. And last episode, she accidentally touched the wheel and then... And Bunny's Revenge moved, and so she started flying it, moving it. It was, and she ended up flying the thing upside down above the ocean, and she fell or jumped into the sail in the last minute. And basically, she's waiting in the sail for hours for her father to come, to reappear. And her father always reappears in the same spot on Bunny's Revenge. Except that Bonnie's revenge is upside down. So, let's see what happens. Episode 103. Taking the wheel, three. Ah! Joy's age two and a half, told by the Red Dragon. What I'm about to tell you is quite, um, well, embarrassing, ridiculous, pathetic, funny, unbelievable. Um, of all the things I have told you so far about the life of Joy Shelley, the human girl I call my dragon little, this is the hardest to tell because, because I like Dragon Father. He is a good father. And this time, oh, the thing that happened to him because of Dragon Little. Hmm. I will just tell it. As you recall, two and a half year old Dragon Little was left alone on Bunny's revenge while Dragon Father was awake and gone from the dream. She realized she could play with the ship's wheel and overturn the ship as it flew above the ocean in a straight line. She was able to save herself by falling into the open sail right above the top of the mast. Beneath her, the mast's highest point was just above the water. There was nothing for her to do for hours except sit on the open sail and wait until Dragon Father would appear to save the day. And indeed, after more than six hours, Dragon Father appeared. He appeared in the same spot as always, on the deck in the same position. But this time, appearing in the same position meant that his feet were up and his head was down. What the... was all he succeeded in saying during his fall before his head hit the water and he disappeared. Dragon Lil made a face. Dragon Father would often disappear when delivered a blow that would kill anyone else. She did not know it, but I've been through dreams and I've seen dreamers. He would disappear when he would wake up. That fall made him wake up. A few minutes later, he reappeared in the same position on the same spot on the deck. He fell immediately. What the... was all he succeeded in saying as he fell flat on the moving ocean surface and disappeared. Dragon Lil squeezed into a deep self-hug and frowned. A minute later, Dragon Father reappeared. This time, he swung around as he fell and spat a dragon little in midair. He pointed to her, mouth open in shock. The water hit him, and he disappeared. Dragon little covered her eyes. 
A few seconds later, she spread her fingers and peered through them. It was just in time as Dragonfather reappeared in the same position at the same spot. He fell but was ready for it. He swung around in the air, fell into the water, but was able to keep his head above it. Just as his head bobbed above water, the top of the mast struck his head in full force. Ah! was all he succeeded in saying before he disappeared. Dragon Lily squeaked and her frown deepened. A minute later, Dragonfather reappeared, as always. He fell, as always, swung around, fell into the water, hands first, and dove in deeper intentionally. Bunny's revenge passed over him harmlessly. After a few seconds, he bobbed up, leaping into the air. A jetpack appeared on his back, keeping him flying. Joy! Dragon Lil's head was looking down at the water, searching to see if he had disappeared. What did you do? Dragonlil released a high-pitched squeak and covered her eyes again. Told by the Red Dragon. Tags, Joy, Justin, learning to drive. This is uh, one of my favorite uh, stories. Actually, I have many, many favorite stories. This is my one of my favorite funny stories, funnier stories, uh, silly stories. And I think most of all because these stories are told... Uh, are based on uh, my girls, my three girls. This obviously didn't happen. This specifically is just because this is what happened when she took the wheel and turned the thing upside down. Uh, but I tell them, uh, right now they're small, so I tell them some of the stuff um, I write about, and when they grow up, they'll read everything. Uh, and they really enjoyed this one. They enjoyed, you know, it was funny, they laughed. Uh, so I like this one. And, yeah, this is just what it's like to grow up in a dream alone. It's one of the dangers. And this is what we're actually about. We are about learning what was it like for Joy to grow up alone in a dream. Alone in a dream, with her father in a dream. What was it like? She's going to be a heroine, and this thing is her life. By the way, as I told you, in this... uh, Everything in her childhood is usually an Easter egg. Usually most things are Easter eggs. I spotted reading reading to you the last uh, three. Well, let's, let's even say the last two ones because the last three had Mary in it and that has a lot of Easter eggs too. But this episode and the last episodes have at least two Easter eggs that will repeat later on in life. And also... Uh, without you noticing later on in uh, the Squash Buckler Diaries. So, I don't know if you've already read the, the future stories and the future books, but um, if you haven't, it's nice guessing. So come back tomorrow for more Easter eggs in The Red Dragon's First Days in the Dream, where we find out more things about Joy, Red perhaps, who knows? Not me. <laughs> so, join us tomorrow, and now, the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. All the tags mentioned in this story are searchable at the website. You can find all the stories there in written form, and in fact, 150 Squash Buckler Diaries more. The Squash Buckler Diaries is the diary of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in dreams. She'll be called the Forgotten Girl by her father. She'll be a true heroine. She'll change the world. This project shows her entire life from birth to death. Check out the website at guyhasson.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. I've been an author and playwright for more than 30 years, and this is the first time I've used the guyhasson.com website because the girl in the dream is my life project. If you have questions, if you want to comment, please do. You can comment at the website or email me at guyhasson at gmail.com. That's G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N, at gmail.com. The theme music is called Brass Gentleman and is created by Thomas Harudek. My name is Guy Hasson, and this is my life project. Come back tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow for more. Thank you.